hundred miles off the coast of Scotland, two trawler skippers battle against the worst of the winter weather. On the fishing vessel Ocean Venture, skipper John Buchan faces ruin as his boat is caught in a storm. Oi! Get out of the storm on that! The light's full of blood! And as the trawler amity heads towards the storm, skipper Jimmy Buchan confronts his deepest fears. This could all go totally wrong. We could all lose our life. And I could be responsible for it. It's another tough winter for the fishermen of Peterhead in northeast Scotland. It's impossible to ignore the dangers of their life at sea. The search has been called off for four fishermen missing since the Scottish trawler Meridian disappeared on Thursday. Some of the relatives of the men will travel to Norway to identify a body found in the water. The Meridian sank in the North Sea in one of the first of the winter storms. Her captain and three crew were drowned. She was well known in Peterhead. This year, North Sea fishermen are facing extra pressure. To preserve fish stocks, there will be new limits on the fish they can catch and days they can spend at sea. As the year ends, they wait anxiously for news of what their quotas will be in the months ahead. Firstly, for whitefish and prawn catchers, a proposed cut of a quarter in the days that they can spend fishing at sea. Big cuts in prawns. Jimmy Buchan watches the news with his first mate, Kevin O'Donnell. The number of days the Amity is allowed to be at sea has been cut by 10%. I could leave skippers with the equivalent of just two and a half days fishing a week. To make his business viable, Jimmy fears he'll have to fish on every day he's allowed, however bad the weather. And that simply means to me that when I'm out there fishing, when I should maybe not be fishing, when the weather is bad, that I'm going to be pushing Amity and the crew to, to her limit, maybe beyond her limit, because of financial pressures. first trip of the year. To escape the storm, Jimmy's headed 130 miles south. It's been a long commute to work for the crew and first mate Kevin. We've been seen from Peter right down here, took us 14 hours. Water's that bad north, we wouldn't have got work. So we've come down here because of the weather. Amity's a prawn troll. Jimmy's come to fish for prawns off the east coast of England, where the sea should be sheltered from the westerly gales. If it's westerly winds, I can shelter anywhere in the lee of the land. It's got the whole breakwater here. The whole of the UK. After the recent sinking of the Meridian, Jimmy's feeling more than usually anxious about the storm. In the last year, we have had some tragedies again within the fishing industry where boats have been lost and all hands have been lost with them. And it makes you take a serious look at what, you, what I was doing myself. For 
me, it's certainly becoming clearer in my mind that this could all go totally wrong and we could all lose our life. And I could be responsible for it. Jimmy won't take no chances. He's scared for himself and he's afraid for the crew as well. But uh, he won't take any unnecessary risks. I think he's getting a bit old now and he gets sort of scared when he's out here. There's too many boats being lost at sea. It can take one sea, one big sea, and it's all over for everybody. This is the feet wave. They are massive. They come from nowhere. You won't even see it coming. And it can just break over your boat. And that's, that's the end of us all. The Amity needs to catch prawns whatever the weather. The first trip of the year is crucial. None of Amity's crew has earned any money during the Christmas holiday. And like all the boats of the Scottish fleet, the crew only get paid a share of what they catch. If they don't catch anything, they don't get paid. It's up to Jimmy as the skipper to make sure they're looking in the right place. Down here, he doesn't know the best places to find the prawns he's looking for. So he has to follow the local English boats. These boats, are, they're all prawn trawlers. Fourteen, just within, within a couple of miles of one another, so... So, usually when you see a, a, a group in like that, I'm thinking there's a bit of news there. When you see a lot of boats around the same area, there's something happening. I think there's a bit of wind in there. There's something here. Feel it, honey. There's some plants. Plant it in there. Despite Karen's optimism, the first call of the year is not what Jimmy was hoping for. That's about the poorest hole that you can go for. No use less. Not enough there to feed me. Never mind feed all of us. Not good, Jimmy. Not good at all. Six boxes. Six boxes. I think we're fighting a losing, losing battle. Are you not giving up already, are you? I have said, who mentioned giving up? I have a clue you're speaking, you're coming across as if you're giving up. Jimmy's not giving up, but he does have to choose whether to stay down south and face poor catches, or head up north and risk his boat and her crew in the storm. In Peterhead, the trawler Ocean Ventures getting ready for her first trip of the year. For skipper John Barkin, one of the hardest things about life at sea is finding the right crew. Get a good crew now with Peter Head is kind of getting difficult because of the oil industry. It's been difficult to get good skilled men. This year, John's trying out a new first mate, Barry Lauder. I knew old Barry, but I'd never actually met him before. I, met, I was very well acquainted with his father. He says Barry's in his way home from New Zealand. Barry's come home to Peterhead after a good year working in New Zealand on trawlers three times the size of Ocean Venture. And his father told me how good he was, so we'll maybe give him a, a chance and see how good he is. But it's early days yet. Okay. Bye, see you when I get home. Nice to be at home, but it's our job now, we've got to go. 
You need to get away and make some more money. I don't want to leave to go to another job. There's a lot of fishermen left to go to the oil. No, but I have no interest in going to the oil. I just want to stay in the fishing boats. We'll go through some hard times now. Still got the winter months to come. And that's when it gets a bit tough. It's 3 a.m. before the ocean venture is finally ready to depart. into the path of the storm, to a place where he hopes to find a shoal of haddock. Steaming about 130 miles, so it's swapping the uh, back to night spot. We'll know it tomorrow when we shoot our nets. Northeasterly point in Scotland, we steam down to the, the mail field, 150 miles. So fast all over the years, so I think uh, we'll find some fish here today. The Echo Sounder helps John find shoals of fish on the seabed. This is what we're seeing, this is the seabed, and these blue, blue marks in the bottom are the uh, fish, feeding in fish. As you can see, the biomass is going up, so that means there's a lot of fishermen. I'm very hopeful, very confident we'll get fish here. Well, I think we're in the, the right spot. There's no one here, we've got up myself, just looking good. The nets are sunk to the seabed and dragged along the bottom. The ocean ventures try to catch valuable whitefish species like cod, monkfish or haddock. Now shoot this out about 200 fathoms. This will be on the bottom ready for towing. Go for about 5 hours. Hopefully a big bag of fish in the bag of it. See what's open. With the 600 meters of warp only half out, the winch should stop working. Yeah, she's not going to do it. David, the ship's engineer, checks the hydraulic pumps that power the winches, but finds nothing. It's soon clear the computer that controls the winches has crashed. Without it, the nets are not straight in the water. The fish can simply slip through. If they can't fix the computer, the two million pound trawler is as good as useless. It's working all clear for what we did. Just change the keyboard and it's not working now, so. John tries to call the computer expert on his satellite phone. But 130 miles out in the North Sea, a simple job like making a phone call is not easy. We're not going to get used to this one. Even with two phones. David does his best to find the problem. But after three hours, he still can't make it work. There's nothing for it but to haul the nets back in. The losing dealing love and neighbor with that fishing properly. Yeah, you know, maybe we'll be doing this uh, the pay up today. We've got to go back to harbor. But we don't want to do that. 
this is going to be some top by the looks of it. Not very good. With the nets not towing straight, they've caught just two boxes of fish. According to fishing folklore, bad luck at sea is the result of bad behavior on land. There's no option but to head back to Peterhead. Well, still I do those boys, let me go here. Something that uh, something that can pure the work. So they do us. Happy New Year. Uh. That's two years he's been away from home. And we won't get paid for that two days. Thought it was good to get home, but it's not good to get home when you know you're not making anything. This is what the crew used to be, fishermen, so we can't moan about it. Well, we can't, but it doesn't do much justice. Three hundred miles farther south, and even down here, Jimmy and his crew are starting to feel the effects of the storm. At least it seems he's found a patch of prawns. And Jimmy's latest catch holds a New Year surprise. Ah, ah, uh, all the prawns were that size. My goodness. 2.7 kilos. I would say if you went to a restaurant, you pay up to 100 pounds for that other prawn. That is not for that one. Jimmy's here for prawns, not lobster. We'll put that back. Because, I mean, what? That's a lobster fisherman, that's their, their living. Yeah, look at that. A poor guy's going to turn that one. In weather like this, even Kevin's 20 years experience doesn't always help. Well, I've got seasick once or twice. And I've had a rough night, night before. Depends what it's been this morning, eh? Too much bleach is no good for this job. You need to be in the sun. Catch the train and keep your garments in your here. <laughs> no, it's, it's a good catch, like, as you can see with the crew, the, 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 the bigger the catch, the more work there is to get it sorted and packed. Oh, bad luck. You got a little less work, Jimmy. Well, we've got a lot of the scum clapping over there. Are you speaking to me, Kevin? Yes, I am. The horse has never stopped. I'm going flat out. Oh, we've got uh, 25 boxes, I think. Very good horse. We have to count the chickens before they're hatched. That will make the boy hit. This is just the start. It's half eleven at night now, so it's about 16 hours, 17 hours we've done today. Same tomorrow again, we have to get up at half past four, go out and do it all over again. On the ocean venture, John Buchan's first trip of the year has been a disaster. That's more or less cost us a whole day's fishing. On days at sea, we need every day to coat, if we hold the coat, we can't afford to be steaming all over the sea. Going along empty-handed, they're wasting two of their precious allowance of days at sea. On the way back to Peterhead, John decides at the last minute to try one final haul to help pay for the cost of the trip. Wiggy, wiggy, boys. 
playoff még lesz jó a fognyen. As they shoot the net, the computer controlling the winches suddenly comes back to life. That was Stephen there, the engineer David. He took the, the, the keyboard out and he played a boat with some of the waiters and he's got the thing going now. I come up here and just push the buttons and it seems to work okay. So it's a good job we decided to shoot here. So here's hoping maybe we won't have to go home after all. It's paid off I think. I'm watching it on trip but um, we won't have to go home now. Keep the boys happy and me. <laughs> With the computer fixed and the nets towing straight, they can at last land some fish. <laughs> The Hall of Collie is a start, but now John desperately needs to find the more valuable haddock or cord to make his trip a success. On the Amity, catches have been getting worse. Pressure is mounting on Jimmy to find a better fishing rod. Fishing is king at the old off here, so we really need to be moving from this area. Unless we get something very good this fall, then we're thinking of moving a hundred miles to the north of here. And the, the, one of the areas that has always come up good in the past is this ooze hole, which is fine for tomorrow, but then the next day is the problem, and that's the one that I, I don't want to get crashed 120 miles out into the sea with another storm coming through. Jimmy will need better catches than this to convince Kevin they should stay out of the storm. Oh, good, nice, Jimmy checks the weather forecast on his computer. The wind in the north is getting stronger. Now I can see just by looking at this, wherever I put my, my, my cursor, my pointer, I can see the wind speed in the direction down the bottom. I can see there it's, it's going to be 43.4 knots. I can see it visually by, by wind speeds on the arrows, but I can also see the color. The, the redder the color, obviously, the more wind there is. And I, I see further east, 50, 51, 53. That's violent. At 50, 50 knots is at least a storm force then. And that's the mean wind speed. That's not the gust, that's the mean. So, it was probably about looking at something not short, far short of a hurricane moving through there on Thursday night. This is where the storm is going to be passing through. This area here. These are where the 50 knot winds were being predicted. So, do I really want to be out here? The problem is, if we pull up snow with nothing, then oh, we have no option but to go to this area. The ocean venture is right in the middle of the storm that Jimmy's trying so hard to avoid. Jones decided to carry on fishing. The weather at the moment is about a frost night. As you can see, the top of the waves, what we call blowing smoke. We don't want to fish in a little while like this. And we still 
Zo, we zijn het punt al heel erg gewend. Oh, hoe is dat hier? Zo we kunnen de foto wel uit, doe het in bad, we hebben het goed gevest in bed, like this. The hall is of good quality haddock, but with the sea so rough, they've only managed to catch six boxes. Get the net straight back in the water to carry on fishing. It's very precarious to me, but I like this. And the tall doors will be at the half inch. That's the most important factor. The cruise work's not over yet. They still have to gut the catch and pack it. A bloody neck out of the boots roll on the river. Makes the job ten times harder. for a few hours rest. On the Abbotty, Jenny's next move depends on what he catches in this hall. Ooh, the Rewind the Tales in Viking, Milford Sarah, Fortis, Cromarty, Forth, Shannon, Rockall, Merlin, Hebrides, Bailey, Fair Isle, Ferris, and South East Island. The big steam is on. 100 miles. With little to show, Jimmy must now head 100 miles north, straight into the path of the storm. On the ocean venture, one of the things every trawler man dreads has happened. The nets have caught on the seabed. The boat is unable to move. John calls the crew onto the deck. Hello, it's quite not been fast as it is, but it's fourth night gear out there, so it's pretty dangerous. Because um, in this kind of weather, we can lose our nets. Uh, it's a lot more dangerous, people can get injured. So, we'll just have to see what happens. Trawlerman. Will Jimmy's hunt for prawns take him headlong into the storm? 
And Will Tom saved 30,000 pounds worth of pets from the grip of the sea.